So here's the, here's the young John Wheeler around the time he started at Princeton. He started at Princeton in fall of 1938, but then 1939, his second year was when he really got off the ground with his non-nuclear fission research. The first year he did the nuclear fission research with Niels Bohr. The second year he was looking for new opportunities to do something different. He didn't want to continue the nuclear fission research. He wanted to do something where he would make his own mark. And when thinking about the prospect of the Germans developing nuclear fission, he didn't really think about that too much because he didn't think that the United States would even get involved in World War II. He was of the opinion that it would remain a European war, we wouldn't get involved, and that people like Enrico Fermi, Leo Szilard, Einstein, and so forth, were a little bit too worried about nuclear fission, and, and it, it wasn't something to really concern oneself with at the time. Later, he regretted the decision to leave nuclear fission. And I'll explain why in a few minutes. So completely by chance, Wheeler was assigned a bright young student from MIT, uh, Feynman. So here's Feynman at Princeton in his typical pose, just sitting and reading a book in uh, Princeton's graduate college. He, was, he lived in Princeton's graduate college and uh, he worked with Wheeler as a teaching assistant. So Feynman's job was to be a teaching assistant. And uh, he had already made a name for himself many times uh, as a brilliant thinker. Even at the young age of 21, he was known as a brilliant thinker. He had three articles already in the New York Times about his work by the age of 21. So the first one was when he was in high school, he won a, uh, a mathematics competition. He was the highest scorer. He was brilliant at calculations. He, was, he could do mental math. He was great at calculus. He learned calculus at a very young age. He was always good at just churning out results, computing. And then in MIT, he was in the honor roll. And then he took a competition called the Putnam Competition. It was the second year of the Putnam Competition. He came out the highest individual score in the country for the Putnam Competition. Harvard offered him a full paid fellowship to go there as a graduate student. He could have stayed at MIT, but they discouraged him because they wanted him to do something different. But he wanted to go to Princeton. Why? Because Princeton had this amazing atom smasher in its basement, the basement of the physics building, where particles will circle around, circle around many times, steered by magnets, and then just at the right moment, would smash into targets, producing all sorts of other particles. And Feynman was fascinated by the idea that he could look at those results, do calculations, and make predictions about particles. He loved to connect theoretical physics with experimental physics and come up with very specific results. So Feynman loved to calculate, come up with an answer, convince himself that the answer was right, and then see it match nature. He didn't like philosophical speculation. He didn't like to think about, well, how does it fit into the bigger picture? But his meeting with Wheeler would steer him more in that direction. So Wheeler needed to meet with Feynman to discuss his teaching responsibilities. So before they did research together, he wanted Feynman to know his responsibility as a grader. It was for a mechanics course. So they read a book called uh, uh, Mechanics by Ernest Mach, and this textbook. And then there would be homework assignments, and Feynman was the grader. So Feynman met with Wheeler in his office at a place called Fine Hall at Princeton, which is where Einstein used to work too, and Niels Bohr visited. So I had a lot of prestigious people there. And Wheeler had his office at Fine Hall. Feynman walked in, and Wheeler was thinking, well, as a young assistant professor, I need to manage my time. He was really interested in being the most efficient because he had to balance research, teaching, committees, and all that stuff for a young professor. So he had a pocket watch. He took it out and put it on the table just to time himself during his meeting with his 
his graduate student, uh, Feynman. Feynman looked at it. The next time they met, Feynman was a little sneaky. He went to a five and dime store like Woolworths and bought his own watch, a wristwatch, very cheap wristwatch. As soon as Wheeler took out his pocket watch and took, put it on the table, just like countering Wheeler's chess move with another chess move, Feynman took out his cheap watch and put it right next to Wheeler's. Wheeler looked at Feynman. Feynman looked back at Wheeler, and they both burst out laughing. A friendship was born at that moment. 